and here we are back again with the Kallenberger farming family. In this painting you'll have seen that the artist has included a lot of children and young children and young people were extremely important to the Nazi party. So when we're looking at this period pre-war and the changing lives of the German people we started looking at workers, we looked at women last lesson. This video I want to look at young people before we move on to persecuting because young people were extremely important for the Nazis because the Nazis tried to control them and they tried to control them in lots of different ways and really the main two methods they tried to control them were through education and through youth organisations and both of these really their purpose was to try and create new Nazis new Nazis who conformed to the German state and followed their ideas in education, this man here, Bernard Rust, was the Minister for Education and he was in charge of controlling education for all the German people at the time. And he had a phrase that the whole function of education was to create Nazis. And you can see that in the work that he did. And the Nazis really tried to create and control education through three different methods. Firstly, through controlling teachers, secondly, through controlling schools, and thirdly, through controlling the curriculum. They tried to control teachers strongly, and only teachers who would follow Nazi orders were allowed to remain teaching in state schools. So anyone who was even slightly an opposition person wasn't allowed to be teaching in a state school. Anyone who was a Jew wasn't allowed to be teaching in a state school. Only teachers who would follow those Nazi orders were allowed to remain. And in fact, even the Nazis set up their own teachers league. And by 1936, 97% of teachers were members. So basically all teachers at this time were members of this group, this Nazi teachers league. And then the Nazi teachers league taught these teachers about ideology and about what they should be teaching kids. So they controlled the teachers. They also tried to control the schools. They set up their own schools. Napola or military schools were run by the SS and the SA to provide a military education, so to provide new people for the army. And Adolf Hitler's schools were aimed to create future leaders of the party. These new types of schools weren't actually that successful though, and by 1939, just over 6,000 students were schooled at only 16 Napola and 10 Adolf Hitler schools. So they weren't really very successful. Nazis were very successful with is controlling the curriculum and the Nazis really controlled what people were taught. So school kids as they do to this day had a timetable but the lessons looked very very different and the content of those lessons was very very Nazified and I think that's the easiest way of putting it. So for example in history all of your education would have focused on the struggle between nations. It would have focused on the parts of history that really emphasised German superiority. It would have taught you about the Aryan race and it would have taught you about strong leadership. So the Nazis chose the bits of history that suited the message that they were trying to get across. The same happened in geography. In geography, people were taught about the, the need for Lebensraum, that term we've used before, living space. And they were taught about new lands that should have belonged to the Germans. In biology, students were taught hugely about race, and we'll look at race in the next video. And the students were asked to measure the faces of non-Aryan children, such as Jews. In mathematics, students were often given um, puzzles and calculations to do that were everything was obsessed with Nazi ideas. So for example, they could be given a mathematical problem to work out the cost of keeping a mentally ill person alive in an asylum. As you can see, this was drastically different from the curriculum that you might have in schools today, where this curriculum, its entire purpose was designed to get kids to agree with the Nazi message. That Nazi message wasn't just limited to their school life, it was also limited, it was also focused on youth organisations and the Nazis really tried to control the leisure time of young people at the, in Germany. In the late 1920s the Nazis set up their own youth organisation, it was called the Hitler Youth and you can see a picture of it here. There were different sections for girls and boys, for young boys and young girls and older boys and older girls in a very, very similar way of the Scouts today. But the big difference was, rather than at the Scouts where you just go and have fun, in the Hitler Youth you'd go and have fun, but you'd also have massive amounts of political ideology thrown at you. 
we're going to use a term about political indoctrination. These people were trying to brainwash these young people. At first in Germany, membership of the Hitler Youth was completely voluntary. However, after 1936, it was made compulsory. And after 39, it was made compulsory that you had to attend meetings. So basically all young people had to go to this organization. After 1936, it was the only organization which young Germans could access sport, facility and activities. So any other youth clubs were closed down and the only organization they could join in was the Hitler Youth. As a result, a lot of people did attend these um, activities that were put on. Let's look at what they did. And they were very different for boys and girls. For boys, the emphasis was hugely on military preparation. They'd go on camps and they'd go marching and the emphasis was hugely on your physical strength. They were taught how to fire guns. So in some respects, lots of kids actually quite liked it because they were quite fun, these activities. You also had to take part in those rallies that we talked about in the, in the previous video. So you can see in this rally here, the Hitler Youth are carrying their flags at Nuremberg. And lastly, they were taken on holidays and camps. So actually a lot of these activities were quite fun and people wanted to take part in them. But they also at the same time had a huge amount of political indoctrination as part of their activities. As you can see from these photos, the key thing for boys was to build these into strong Germans who'd want to take part in the army. For girls it was quite different. There was still an emphasis on physical strength and physical fitness and there was a lot to do with uh, gymnastics and running and things outdoors but for girls as well there was other activities they were also uh, they also put a propaganda up around towns now the boys did this as well but the girls often did a little bit more the girls were also taught huge amounts about becoming mothers and about order and strictness so as you can see here for girls really the focus was on becoming a mother and becoming a mother in the German state. So as you can see, all of this, education, youth activities, everything was focused on making kids and young people join up with that Nazi ideology and follow along with what they were told. Everything was about control. The extent to which this worked is questionable. Most young people did go along with it because as you can see, some of these activities look quite fun. But young people, in the same way they are today, are always quite cynical, and some people didn't join in, and some people thought it was boring and didn't want a part of it. Or even that, either, either way, this was a massive change for young people in Germany, and the 1930s saw a huge amount of control that they'd never seen before.